hello everyone you're yeah, welcome back to my channel my name is Inka. in today's class we are going to be recreating this beautiful detachable flare so let's get started for this project i used seven yards of satin fabric and i also used 10 yards of organza fabric so let's get started so this is the organza fabric that i use I'm going to keep that aside and I'm going to first work on the satin. So first, the first thing you're going to do, you know, satin usually come in length 60 inches. So first, let me confirm it for you so that you can see. All right, so you can see it's by 60 inches. So what I'm going to do next is to measure 60 inches four times on my fabric. I'm going to be measuring 60 inches four times on my fabric just the way I'm showing you here like this. Okay, so I've measured uh, the 60 inches four times, then I'm going to just cut that out. The reason for this is because I want to cut a circle, so and I want it to all have equal sides. So first I'll fold into two. Okay, so it's folded into two now. Ensure you fold it very well. Then after that, you fold it into four. So now I have a square that measured 60 inches on all the sides. So I folded the fabric into four and it's 60 inches on all sides. So when that is done, I lay it flat on the floor. Then I folded it like a triangle like this so that it can be easy for me to rotate, you know, so that it can be easy for me to rotate. So as it is now, right now, as it is like a triangle, is into eight folds. All right, so what I'm going to do next is to measure Starting from the tip of the triangle, I'm going to measure 60 inches all around and I'll rotate the 60 inches. And when I'm done rotating it, I'm going to just cut it out. So when I'm done cutting it out, the next thing is just to open it up like make it to be back into that uh, four folds that it was before. You have to be very careful here. You don't want it to scatter. All right, so this is it now. This part here that I am right now is open. The four sides are open while the other side is closed. It's on fold. This other side is on fold. You can see this part here is open. So the next thing I'm going to do is to measure from the down part my front length plus my radius. My front length is 48 inches and then my radius is 5. So 48 plus 5, that will give me 53 inches. So I'll measure the 53 inches upward like this. So after measuring the 53 inches, I'm I'm going to just put a mark then I will now shift it upward and let that my point of 53 inches be the starting point just look at the way I'm going to adjust the fabric so I'll just shift it upward and let where that my shocking is I'll let it be the starting point like so so basically we are trying to adjust it the center front is going to be shorter than the center back so the back is going to have the train like it's going to have like ss 
so since this is by 60 and we already removed 53 inches for the front and radius so the back length is going to be seven inches longer all right it's because my client is very tall i didn't be she's not really tall you will have more than enough train like let's assume the front length for the person is like 42 or something you know you will have a lot at the back as excess okay so after readjusting it the place you have your marking will be like this then again if you still want it to be longer than this you can still add to the down part so that the back train can be longer all right but for this tutorial this is how i made mine so the next thing i'm going to now do is just to rotate my radius my radius is five i'm just going to rotate the five all around then after that i'll cut it so after cutting it this is how it looks the center front is open and the center back is also open so it's going to have joining at the back because it's going to be having zipper so at the end of the day it's going to like look like this can you see the front is shorter while the back is long all right so i'm just going to notch half inch at the back for my zip allowance all right so i'm going to keep that aside and then i'm going to get the organza which we're going to be using for the underlay and also for the lining like i said earlier the organza is 10 yards so i'm going to be folding the organza the same way i folded the main fabric so i'll measure 60 inches four times so i'll fold it into four and lay it flat on the floor and then i'm going to cut that out but then the organza is not going to be having tail like it's not going to be having extension on the back so both of them both the front and the back they are going to be equal so for the for the organza i made it to be shorter than the front length like i said earlier the front length for this the front length is 48 which is we can say that is just the basic length just that the back is now longer so the 48 i'm going to now make the organza to be shorter than that 48 inches so that it's not going to be coming out under that is for the underlay but the lining is going to be exactly 48 inches because i want it to be equal with the main dress okay so i'm cutting the underlay now and the underlay is going to be 43 inches so it's going to be five inches shorter than the main length all right so i folded the fabric into four and it is 60 inches on all the sides all the sides it is 60 inches by 60 inches on all the sides so i'll fold it again like a triangle just the way we did for the main uh, body and then i'm going to rotate the 60 inches all around All right, so after rotating uh, the measurement, I'm going to go back to the bottom part and I'm going to measure the 43 inches length that I want. I'm going to measure it upward like this. So just place your tape measure where your rotation stop and measure the length you want upward. Then the remaining one at this upper part is going to be the radius because you want this to be in excess so that you can pleat it under the main dress so that you can give it volume. All right, so at the end of the day mine was remaining like um, 12 inches then i rotate the 12 inches then i cut it out all right so the underlay is what is on the floor now and you can see the length the way it is so the remaining one i'm going to be using it for the lining so instead of cutting a full flare for the lining i cut just a um, half circle for the lining so i fold the fabric into two so for the line uh, for the lining you're go the fabric will just be folded into two then after that you fold it like a triangle you understand you know the ones we've been cutting was folded into four but this particular one is folded into two then after that i i 
fold it like a triangle then i rotate the 60 inches that i'm working with before i say rotate the 60 inches then the radius is going to be your waist circumference divided by 3.14 against the 6.28 that we have been working with since or you can do the shortcut the way i'm doing now just rotate the 60 inches then after that you measure the length you want for the front from the bottom part i want 48 so you measure the 48 upward and then the remaining thing there will be your circumference so it's just going to be your radius for the circumference all right so because that is what i did I rotate my 60 inches then after that i measure my 48 inches upward then the remaining thing is going to be my radius so after cutting it out this is how the lining looks and it's exactly the length of the main dress just that it's not having the back trend so the length for the lining is 48 inches exactly all right and you can see the underlay the underlay is is, is shorter and the radius is wide the circumference at the upper part is wide so that you can gather it all right so the next thing i'm going to be doing next is to cut the waistband so i place my fabric on fold then the length of the waistband is going to be your waist circumference measurement plus one inch for the zipper so you are going to cut that out so you can see my client's measurement is 34 waistband plus one inch that's 35 so i cut the 35 inches out and the width of the waistband is going to be 5 inches. So it's just a strip that measures your waist circumference length plus your zip allowance. Then the width is 5 inches. Then after that, you are going to fill it with your stay. So I place my stay on it and then I fill my stay on it. Then after that, I folded half inch upward and then I iron in place. Just the way I'm showing you here, just fold half inch then you iron it so after that you fold the uh, band into two like this leaving half inch at the other edge and then you are going to iron it as well so at the end of the day you are going to have waistband of two inches so the remaining half here that is showing, that's what you're going to be using to join the uh, skirt part that we have cut out to this waistband. Don't forget the width of the waistband is 5 inches. So by the time you fold it into 2, it will be 2 and a half. And then you're going to use the half, like I said, to join it to the skirt part. Hope it's clear. Alright, so I'm going to show you how to sew it now. And please note, before sewing, I already weave all the raw edges before sewing. You can see it from the video here. I don't know if you can see it. I already weave all the raw edges, leaving only the waist circumference area. Alright, so first thing, you take your satin. We are working with one side first. So you measure 4 inches inward from the front like this then you place the underlay on top of that four inches marking and then you are going to start stitching the underlay on the satin you are working from the wrong side of the satin so you are stitching the uh, underlay on the wrong side of the satin and you are going to be pleating it as you sew you are going to be pleating the uh, organza on top of the satin so we are working with one side so continue to place the organza on top of the satin like so till you get back to the back part so the satin is into two pieces so and also the underlay is into two pieces so the only one that is a single piece is the lining the only one that is a single piece is the lining the reason for this is because it's going to have joining at the back and the front is going to be open okay so i'm done pleating the underlay on top of the satin the next thing you are going to do now is to stitch the two of them together on that zip allowance side you can see just place the two of them together and stitch it together 
so that they can become one single piece at that zip allowance side let me show you very well you can see the way it is so just match the two of them together and run your stitch all the way down and when you are done this is how it's going to look you can see it you can see the four inches that we left in front can you see so i'll take the other side now and i'm this time around i'm starting the stitching from the zipper side because that is what is easier for me so you place the underlay on top of the on top of the satin don't forget you're placing the underlay on the wrong side of the satin then you are going to continue to pleat the underlay on top of it since i started from the zipper side this time around before i get to this front i measure my four inches so that i can stop four inches before i get to the front can you see then after that i match the two of them together at the zipper side again then i run my stitch just match the two of them together at the zipper side and stitch them together all the way down all right so when you're done you're going to take the two pieces like i said earlier it's into two pieces it's going to be having joining at the back so match the two pieces together at the center back and then you measure eight inches downward and notch you can see i've notched the eight inches position that's going to be the zip opening so from that eight inches point you're going to stitch the two of them together all the way down with half inch seam allowance you know the zip allowance that we had it is just half all right so you stitch it all the way down can you see where the organza stop so even when the organza stop you are still going to continue stitching all the way down through the satin all right so when that is done the next thing now is to take the lining then you are going to place the lining directly at the beginning of the satin can see and then this time around you are going to be placing the lining on top of the right side of the satin can you see so match them together at the front like this this is my front match them together at the front first you, you can stitch from the down part i think i should start from the down part you can see the satin and the organza they are equal so match them together this is the bottom part of the front so from the bottom part you are going to join the two of them together note the uh, the organza is facing the right side of the satin then you are going to stitch it all the way up i think i need to leave this so that you can see it i don't have to forward it all right so you stitch it together all the way up to the waist area So when you are done stitching it, you take the other side of the organza and then you are going to match it with the second side of the front of the satin. This time around, I'm starting from the waist area. You can see the way it is. Match them together and then you are going to stitch the two of them together all the way down. And when you're done this is how it's going to look can you see so this is the center of the organza what you are going to do at the center of the organza you're going to slit it open you're going to slash it like about eight inches exactly your zipper zip allowance length so now what you are going to be doing next is to turn the organza to the wrong side you turn the organza to the wrong side you can see we have used the organza to conceal the edge of this satin can you see so you can see the distance of that four inches that we left earlier 
so what you're going to be doing next now is to reverse that four inches like i'm showing you here such that the the position where the underlay starts will now be the starting point then you are now going to stitch all the layers together like i'm showing you here so at this point you complete the lining on top of it because the lining too is excess it's intentional like you see from the cotton so you pleat it it's just it's just for us to have more fullness so just pleat till you get to the zipper side and when you're about to get to the zip allowance notching you roll the organza two times at the end and then you're going to stitch like half inch before you get to your zip allowance notching you don't want the organza to stop on the zip allowance notching can you see see where i stopped this is my notching i did not allow the organza to get to the notching i'm talking about the lining the organza lining all right so this is how it look so the next thing you want to do now is to do the same thing to the other side now i'm starting from the zipper side roll the mouth of the organza like this place it half inch away from the zip allowance notching then you join the two together on the waistline and then you pleat the excess of the lining on top of the satin and the underlay don't forget to also reverse the front like this you can see the way i reverse the front that four inches reverse it and then you pleat the remaining excess okay so when you're done this is how it's going to look you can see it you can see the uh, the lining you can see the slit that we have at the center back of the lining so the next thing now is just to stitch all around this opening it's just the lining this is just to conceal the raw edge of that opening on the lining side so when you're done making your stitch this is how it's going to look can you see all right, so the next thing we are going to be doing now is to attach our waistband. So this is my waistband. The width of the waistband is 5 inches. The width of the waistband is 5 inches and then the length is the waist circumference measurement plus 1 inch. So the next thing you will do now is to fold this waistband into two this way so that you can notch the center. Fold it into two like this and then you notch the center. This is the center. So Fold it back into two again from the center you measure four inches you measure four inches and you will notch it if you remember from the sewing we already reduced the waistline by four inches you know that four inches that we leave between the underlay and the uh, satin yes that four inches that is it all right so you measure the four inches by the time you open the notching for the four inches you will have four inches to the left and then four inches to the right starting from the center of the waistband all right so what you do now is to place the waistband you can see the parts that you have the raw edges you place it right side of the waistband will be facing the right side of the uh, skirt and then you start from the zipper side and then you are going to stitch the waistband to the skirt with half inch seam allowance so by the time you get to your notching you back stitch and then you stop you can see this is how it's going to look 
you stop and then you now take the waistband and then you grab the other end of the zip allowance on the skirt and also the other hand of the zip allowance on the waistband and then you are going to stitch again be careful so that your waistband will not twist try and arrange it very well all right so i've rearranged mine and right now is my skirt part that is on top so i'm still going to continue stitching the two of them together with half inch seam allowance and when i get to the notching i will stop and back stitch all right so i'm done touching the waistband the next thing i'm going to do now is to fix my zipper but before fixing the zipper you have to notch the midway of your uh, waistband now we already use iron to crease the midway you know just notch it that is where your zipper is going to start from by the time you open it so place the right side of the zipper on the right side of the dress starting from your notching your midway notching and then you are going to stitch the zipper to the skirt When you are done with one side, you turn the, the skirt upside down this way the way I am showing you and then you stitch the other side, stitch the second side of the zipper from the down part or whichever way is easy for you. And when you're done installing the zipper you bend the waistband over like i'm showing you here so that you can conceal the raw edge of the zipper and then you're going to stitch don't forget you do this for the two sides Alright, so when this is done, the next thing now is just to top stitch the waistband or you can just use your aiming gum to finish the waistband, depends on what you want, it's either you top stitch or you use aiming gum to finish it up, but for me, I usually use aiming gum to finish it, then after the aiming gum, I'll still top stitch, <laughs> alright, so that's it. So then the zip allowance side on the on the lining part, I just top stitch it on this same allowance of the zipper so that everything can be nice and neat. Okay, so this is how it looks from the inside. Can you see?
that's the end of the class for today please kindly subscribe if you have not subscribed and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime i upload any videos thanks for watching i'll see you next week bye